Okay, we can get started with the CNCFCI Working Group monthly meeting. Good to see everybody. Uh, do feel free to review and add any items to the agenda. We've got a few upcoming events to mention. Um, so the first one is in progress now. Mobile World Congress is happening in Barcelona. Some exciting releases and news have come out about the CNF testbed. And that's the Cloud Native Network Functions testbed. And I know Taylor, you've been assisting with the demo and presentation. And there will also be a CNF testbed BOF twice monthly call on the first and third Monday of the month. So do check out the repo at cncf slash cnf testbed for more information on that. Looks like the first of April will be the Lanero Connect in Thailand. And also in April will be Open Networking Summit where I see Watson was, um, his CFP was accepted and he'll be presenting on the CNF testbed. There's a link to that presentation there. Please check it out if you're able to attend ONS. KubeCon Cloud NativeCon Barcelona is in the middle of May. Hope to have an intro and deep dive for the CNCF CI dashboard. And then Cloud Cl KubeCon Cloud NativeCon China in Shanghai in June. So we're excited to announce that the cncf.ci status dashboard v 20 has been released. Uh, you can check out the release notes at the link below. And I have prepared some slides to go over quickly. Uh, I think about 10 minutes if not sooner, to show where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going with the cncf.ci status dashboard. So the agenda, we'll go over the who, what, and why, a brief demo of the cncf.ci dashboard, uh, overview of the dashboard, the V2 goals, the timeline and events, and have some time for Q&A. CNCF team, oh, thank you all for joining this call. Watson, Lucina, Denver, Taylor, Josh, Krista, Robert, and not pictured Hippie Hacker, project co-founder. So why do we have a CNCF.ci dashboard? Because the CNCF ecosystem, it keeps growing. Right now, there are four graduated projects, 16 incubating projects, 12 sandbox projects. And CNCF would like to ensure that those projects are building, provisioning, deploying um, as expected. And the CNCF CI dashboard visualizes that. In the slide, you can see a link to the landscape, which is L as in landscape.cncf.io. And that shows the current that the current projects that are in CNCF. As this slide will be outdated shortly once the next project is um, included. So the CNCF CI dashboard consists of a CI system, a status repo server, and the user-facing dashboard. The CI system has three stages currently for build, provisioning, and deploy. And we test on the project stable in head on a bare metal environment. The testing software can reuse artifacts from the project CI system or generate new build artifacts. And then the repository server collects the results and displays them on the dashboard. So here's a view at the CNCF projects that we are targeting to add to the CNCF CI dashboard. We will start with graduated, which have currently been added and then move to incubating. Once graduated incubating, then we'll move on to sandbox. We also have one Linux Foundation project on the dashboard, ONAP. So a quick timeline of the CNCF CI platform. The CI platform started uh, in 2017. 
and the V10 dashboard was released in 2018. We had a few releases in 2018 to include ONAP, Envoy, other projects, other cloud providers, and today we've released the V20 dashboard. We'll take a look at where we're at today. So where we're at today is we're focusing on the projects. We have the graduated projects displayed above the incubating projects and then ONAP. We're showing the build status, the um, releases for stable and head, and we're deploying and testing on a bare metal packet environment. This is refreshed every morning at three in the morning. It currently shows build provision and deploy stages and we'll be adding that fourth stage of testing, which is um, in planning. So some of the goals for the V20 dashboard is to switch the focus to um, showing a third party validation of builds deploy and testing for the CNCF graduated and incubating projects and testing that on the bare metal environment. Upcoming iterations will focus on being a scalable projects ecosystem and collaborating with CNCF project maintainers to add and maintain those projects on CNCF CI. We're also going to be building integration with the project's existing CI systems so that we can reuse their build artifacts, their deploy artifacts, and end-to-end um, -end tests and also it'll be restructured in a way that can allow contributions from external project maintainers. Key features at a glance, highlight and validate those CNCF graduated and incubating projects, increase collaboration with the CNCF project maintainers, accelerate adding new projects to CNCF CI, demonstrate provisioning on bare metal packet, and the, the next release will show Kubernetes stable release, and then we'll add functionality to show the head release, as well as we can support more release versions of Kubernetes, like a release candidate or the last stable release. Uh, we can, do, it can scale infinitely. So <laughs> I'll show you the mock-up in a minute. We also want to use kubeadm for bootstrapping Kubernetes on packet. So what's next? This is a mock-up of the UI changes that are in progress on our dev environment and will be released as soon as possible to cncf.ci. They include adding the test environment section for Kubernetes stable on packet at the top and adding a test column to show end-to-end -end test results that are provided by the project maintainer. And we'll also switch the order of the build and release columns. We've published our roadmap over at github.com slash crosscloudci. At a high level in February, removing providers to focus on project-focused home screen and we'll do some planning on adding smoke tests after the app deploy phase. We also will continue planning on integrations and how to use kubeadm. And next month, we will add support for those external integrations for the build, deploy, and end-to-end -end tests. We'll update the own app stable and head releases and add kubeadm to the provisioning stage. In April, we'll publish documentation on how external CNCF Project maintainers can add and maintain their projects on the dashboard. We'll add those smoke tests to the app deploy stage and collaborate with maintainers on how to add end-to-end -end tests. We'll also add support for more Kubernetes releases in the test environment and collaborate with maintainers to accelerate adding more CNCF projects to the dashboard. If we take a look at the roadmap, That's at a high level, um, releasing V2, how to add a new project, add testing on Kubernetes release candidate, 
three tickets are in progress or really in testing. So these three will be closed by end of the week to implement that test environment session. Add the test column and move the build and release columns. Then we'll move on to V21 to implement a release selector dropdown to toggle between stable and head Kubernetes. We'll add subheaders and alphabetize sorting so that you can see at a glance which projects are graduated, which ones are incubating, and which ones are Linux Foundation. And then we'll start changing the back end and how the existing project details, release details, build details, deploy phase details um, are all added so that we can support that external um, integration with contributors. So there are a couple of events that we may have mentioned earlier. The Open Networking Summit works on my machine by Watson in Denver. The KubeCon Cloud Native Con in May for the CNCFCI intro. There are several ways you can provide feedback to the CNCFCI dashboard. Uh, you can join the monthly CNCFCI working group calls, currently scheduled for the fourth Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Please subscribe to the mailing list. If you have any questions, you're welcome to send us an email. And if you're not already on the cncf.slack channel, please join that and join the CNCFCI channel. And we always welcome issues to the GitHub tracker board on CrossCloud CI. Does anyone have any questions about the CNCFCI dashboard? Lucina, I have a question. This is Ed from Packet. Hi, Ed. Hi. Do you have a sense for um, degree of difficulty for a project if they were to want to uh, start the process of getting added to the dashboard? Is this a, a one hour job, a one day, one week, one month, one year sort of task? That is a good question. We've recently, in this last sprint, and it's in testing, we've broken it out into the various um, parts, so it's composable. And we currently are testing this project column, so how to add a logo, the name, the display name, and the URL. And that would take, I think it would just take cloning the, the repo, creating a, creating a folder, and then adding that information and creating a pull request. So that one itself would be a matter of 15 minutes, I'd say, um, having gone through it and tested that myself. The build and release and deploy, we are still in high level planning. So I think, Taylor, if you're available, do you have a feel for how long it may take for that project to add details for those components? I, I think um, you're right. It, that would be very small amount of time. So it's the other parts that we're working out. Um, but as far as maintenance, updating um, the project details, that should be pretty minimal. Right now, it is in a it's in a separate repo from the projects. So each one of the repos, each one of the projects have their own repository under um, under this org and the configuration the way we're doing it we're trying to make it to where a cncfci configuration file can be moved into the project eventually and then all of that could be maintained so any type of name changes or logo changes or other things that get updated could be there and that would be similar with all the other pieces on the screen uh, that lucina is showing so we're working through each one of those right now to just put a, a ballpark out there if all of the prereqs are met which is primarily are your artifacts publicly available uh, is your status information if you're using something like circle ci can we 
pull that because that's where we're going towards is pulling in information from multiple places and trying to show how they work together. So if those are publicly available and you've met those prereqs, then adding the necessary information to the configuration file should be um, less effort. Where, where we're going to have more effort would be, say, if Core DNS says we're using um, Travis CI here and we need this sort of setup, then and we haven't integrated with that then we need to walk through that process. That would take some time, but then the next project will be able to utilize that same integration. So for ONAP, we actually have an integration with their Jenkins server, um, and that's using the Jenkins API. So ideally, we can build on that with anyone else. Um, beyond that, you start getting into stuff like testing. So for the deploy stage, we actually want to do smoke test. So as soon as a deploy of a project happens, we immediately want to do some initial testing to see services are up before saying it's fully ready. And that ties in with the green badge. And so collaborating with projects to say, what is a minimum smoke test? And those sort of things on a HP URL or a, a DNS query to core DNS. And then you start looking at the next stage, which should be integration testing. So we're hoping, and what Lucina was showing, that we can do these piece by piece and let projects maintain more and more and add themselves and start um, updating more of the parts so they can get on sooner. And then as they add like full integration testing, then that badge would go live from NA to green, red. Does that address the kind of the timeline and effort a, a little bit from a project perspective? Yes, thank you, Taylor. That's a very good description of it. Um, and it illustrates that uh, some of the dependency of the difficulty depends on whether you've already worked with the CI system that that project is doing. So it's more about CI integration and less about the project itself. Absolutely. A lot of the upfront effort is CI integration. And then as we have covered more of them, then we will focus on helping with um, the t testing, like Core DNS and Prometheus. In particular, we've had a lot of feedback on how can we collaborate to build those tests, including stuff like uh, templates or best practices on, in areas where you could say, we've dropped them in here and here's how they're gonna run and what's expected. Any other questions for Lucina or anyone else on Saints FCI? Thanks, Taylor. Would you like to share your screen for your agenda item? Sure. Okay, so this is, I want to talk about uh, CNF testbed, which is a new um, released uh, project from CNCF. This is a, a more of a um, complementary effort to all the projects, similar to CNCF CI is not a project going through the incubating process or anything yet but it's, it's a project that's helping different projects. So uh, let me see, there's a slide deck is moving around a little bit. Let me find the next one, here we go. So a, another is fully open source initiative. Um, it's up on GitHub 
at uh, on CNCF slash CNF testbed. And the focus has been about performance testing in comparison with uh, VNS, so VM-based network functions to cloud native versions. And it could encompass, and it, and it probably will, because we've been talking about use cases that are not just performance-based, but other functionality, and that'll highlight items like orchestration and, and failures and other things. So we'll end up with test and CI testing, deploying those where we would take down um, different components and see how those work and other things. But right now it's been around performance and, and trying to get identical code. So the same base network function code, how does it work? in an environment like OpenStack or any KVM environment versus Kubernetes. And, and then trying to say, we're using the same hardware, it's public. This is, it's all being done on, on packet as, as the primary. And we do have a complementary work being done with the Linux Foundation CSIT project, which is part of FDIO. Um, and they do testing in their lab and they're actually doing some of the same, taking the same tests that we're doing and running it there. We're also running some of their tests to kind of compare that. Uh, the test bed itself though, the idea is you can deploy the entire thing from nothing but an API key, packet API key, and be able to bring everything up in your own account and, and have the machines running, the clusters, whether that's OpenSock, Kubernetes, or whatever you're wanting to test, and then deploy the, the network functions, the applications in a configuration and then run tests against those. Um, so it looks pretty uh, similar between the environments. You have your regular clusters. And for us on the performance test, what we're talking about is there's a traffic generator that's um, sending packets and in our case, as fast as possible, so that we're trying to stress test the clusters, all the different components that are comprised on that, and, and see what the performance is and how um, everything reacts. So that's kind of a high level. And there's a, this is, we're looking at, in this, it's showing there's layer two connections. So at packet, we actually connect one of the ports um, to be layer two traffic. So versus in the Kubernetes side, I didn't drop a slide in here. We still, on the Kubernetes side, you still have your regular flat layer three network, but you also have in these pods and on the containers themselves, additional ports that are connected to layer two. And then you can do additional type of traffic on there. And in our case, we're um, handing over the interface outside of, of, of running it in the regular path that Kubernetes would do or OpenStack would do to control that traffic and, and, and run it in a high, higher performance setup. Uh, this is showing some of the software running. So just trying to see all the different pieces that, that's up. So on the bottom here, we have the packet pieces. There's some type of physical router. We talk and actually configure that when we bring up the test bed so you don't have to do anything ahead of time. You're not required to go in and try to pre-configure the packet environment. Once you have a API key, bring up the test bed, which includes going and configuring the router with any type of VLANs or whatever configuration you want for the network testing uh, using the API. Um, we've been working pretty closely with Packet on access to the different things that are coming out and trying to work to support more use cases and telcos. Um, so that's been great. Um, thanks to them on that. And um, the rest of this kind of goes over the software. It's all 100% open source. So one of the items on this project is it's trying to recreate use cases that are out there that use 
some open source, some proprietary or different bits or configuration that you may not have visibility to. So all of this is reproducible. Um, on the traffic generator, there's OPNFV or Linux Foundation NFV Bench, uh, T-Rex, DBDK. All those pieces are out there and looking at other projects that um, are using those and trying to reuse some of what they have. Here for the difference on the cluster would be this V switch. So this is what's providing the additional interfaces. So normally on the Kubernetes, it's going to talk through the kernel networking. We add a V switch running a VPP software that connects to the interfaces. It also connects to the containers using a memory interface called MemIF, and that allows high-speed um, communication. And then over on the, um, I don't know why that says OpenStack, I should say vhost user. I need to fix that. I'll just put vhost. So on the OpenStack side, um, it's also using the same VPPV switch, and there's an OpenStack um, project called VPP Networking. So it talks to um, OpenStack using the Neutron. Um, and everything looks pretty similar after that, as far as the configuration. Um, similar to Kubernetes, though, we give the VMs interfaces that are talking to the vSwitch. So this is all to try to have it as close as possible apples to apples while using the technology that's appropriate in those environments. The rest of it's pretty common stuff that you would have on the master and controller nodes. Um, I'll move on. <clears throat> um, and if y'all have questions, we can come back to those here at the end. So once for this particular, like what are we doing right now? We've done several different use cases and tests um, over the past uh, 10 months or so, including some tests for KubeCon. Um, and here's one of them. This is the a performance one. You can have, you can take these network functions, deploy them to Kubernetes or OpenStack and chain them together in some fashion. You can go through the vSwitch. So this is the traffic going through. And it's similar Kubernetes or OpenStack. The big difference on Kubernetes is it uses the memory interface versus uh, vhost user. And then on Kubernetes, you can also do um, directly connect those containers together. So that makes a big difference on performance. Um, there's some other type of scenarios, but those are the two big ones that we're looking at for network testing. And you can also run multiple chains. So whether you have different, you're separating because they're running different type of services um, on these, or maybe you're splitting stuff up between different networks or whatever you may, may want to do. It's, you have use cases where you want different chains. So we are doing testing where you have multiple chains where the density changes on a, on a node, the amount of resources, CPU memory can be affected. So then how does that affect performance? So we've done different, a lot of different type of scenarios. This is showing one of them with three chains and two network functions for each change for each one of those configuration types. And then um, we pull the results. This is kind of a summary of, some of the results um, on the OpenStack side for the three chain two network functions um, or the v VM side, this was actually, I think this was KVM, 1.1 million packets per second. So you're looking at large numbers. So this isn't the, when you're looking at um, requests per second on say a web server, this is on your high speed network equipment. And then you're moving that type of service into containers or VMs. And then 6 million on Kubernetes, actually. So this is Kubernetes. These are for the snake case where it's going in and out. And then when you directly connect, we were seeing nearly eight, uh, nearly 9 million 
packets per second. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is some of the stats that is about deploy time, like on OpenSAC is over an hour to get the infrastructure up in less than 16 minutes, including a reboot of packet server um, for Kubernetes. So that's pretty cool. We're working to get that down to not have to reboot servers, even with paths like kernel perimeters and stuff via the packet API. Um, and then deploy time of the actual network function. So bringing up like the snake case or whatever, how long does that take? Um, so if you're looking at CI and iterating and you want to go through these, then you want to get all of these numbers down as much as possible, resources down so that you can run more workloads. And then ideally still maintain the same performance or better as we continue going. Um, let's see. So we've, this um, has been going since around May. So KubeCon, Bar, uh, KubeCon Copenhagen was kind of when this project kicked off. And the primary challenges have really been around OpenSec. We actually have been trying to get a OpenStack high performance with VPP, 100% open source, that's redeployable and works as expected whenever you bring it up, has been very difficult. So we've actually just got it fully up to working on on-demand um, packet instances in the last couple of weeks. And those are with Mellanox network cards, which are not ideal as far as they don't have they, they use proprietary drivers. There's a lot of other weirdness in the way the drivers work. Um, there's some funkiness in the OpenStack Neutron and other pieces that we've messed with, especially around making that work with VPP. So a lot of different things to get it to a point where someone can just take it and deploy a new cluster uh, when they want on, on packet. Kubernetes. Mellanox, again, difficult everywhere. Um, doing, how do you want to do layer two? How do you add new ports? Um, there's stuff like Multis where you can add multiple ports, but it's at the pod level, so you don't get it to do direct container, to container connections. There's a lot of other items that you start dealing with um, there, so working with that. Network Service Mesh has a lot of awesome stuff coming in for configuring it declaratively using Kubernetes way, but that's um, in progress. Now we're kind of in, we're moving towards it. We attend those meetings and they work with us and attend CNF testbed, but that's kind of in the future. Um, so that's probably it. Uh, let's see if, again, API key, if people are interested in this, you can, recreate it, um, interested in people saying, you're not doing Kubernetes right, you should be doing this and pull request, opening tickets, whatever there. We are looking at other environments so that we can compare packets like the primary area um, for us to focus. We'd like to be able to do stuff to compare it on other areas like AWS um, Metal, i3 Metal, they've also released, I don't think this says anything here, but their C, um, I think they're five, C5N and C5, which have 25 gig and 100 gig um, network connections. So we'll be looking at some of those. Um, I don't have a and a thing here, but I'm happy to <clears throat> answer some questions about this. Yeah, hi, this is Chris Hodge from the OpenStack Foundation. Um, I actually have a few questions um, and you'll have to forgive me because we really didn't start digging into this um, until a couple days ago uh, or yesterday, really. Um, so, you know, if we're uninformed on some of these items, you know, please be sure to correct me. Um, but one of the things that, that concerns us a little bit is um, it actually appears that you're running both the Kubernetes and the OpenStack on different hardware. Um, you know, we were, and let me let me look at our notes here. Um, it, it appears that Kubernetes runs on C1x large and OpenStack on M2x large. Um, it, it, you know, and I don't, I don't I don't know if that is something that we missed or um, if you're aware that you're actually 
you know, doing the performance metrics on different platforms. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so if I would love a pointer, open an issue, or uh, send me a, a Slack message on the CNFs, wherever you'd like. If you see something that's um, different, it's there may be something with potentially the controllers and master nodes that could be on different um, instance types. The performance metrics that you're seeing here those are on the same hardware, so that would be on, so when I, when I referred to like the Mellanox, that's the M2 extra large for both OpenStack and um, for Kubernetes. So that's Mellanox next, the Connect, Connect X4s is what the Mellanox is, and that's the exact same hardware when we're talking about the data plane testing. We're not doing any testing of how the master and control node work for management traffic the layer two when i showed like yeah so all of the we happen to have the masters connected they can talk there but there's no talk on for the management communication there so the traffic generator is only hitting the worker nodes that's all layer two these worker nodes are all m2 extra larges what we don't have on OpenStack yet, and so we're not showing any a comparison yet, is we do not have OpenStack running on Intel NIC-based instances. Um, the packet will be releasing a new instance type, and Ed, if, if you're listening, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's called the N2 Extra Large that'll be coming out that have quad port intels and we've been testing some reserved types. Yes, I believe that's correct. I haven't seen the exact announcement yet, but I know I've seen pictures of the Quadnik uh, systems. Okay, so, thanks, Ed. So I think those are coming out if I've heard in sometime this quarter, um, in the next six weeks-ish or something. I'm, I, I don't see any public anything mentioned, but I think that's about right. And then at that point, everyone will be able to deploy on on-demand Intel versions. But if, if you want to do tests right now, the comparisons that you get between OpenStack and Kubernetes would be on M2 Extra Large with Mellanox next. Those are dual port. Okay. Yeah. The, the other thing that, we've, that, we, that, that kind of jumped out at us is we were comparing deployment times um, 65 minutes is um, to me it feels like you're doing something wrong um, uh, you know I know that for some similar installations that I do in my home lab which I probably doesn't even have the same performance characteristics of what you're doing there um, that time should be much closer to what you're talking about with the Kubernetes time but it's not entirely clear to us what you're measuring too like if you look at issues 110 and 111 um, it, it appears that, you know, 30 minutes of that time is um, spent in, in packet provisioning, um, but it's not clear if, you know, you capture the same amount of time when you're deploying the, um, when you're doing the Kubernetes deployments. And so it's not clear to us exactly where that time is being burned up, um, but, you know, we think that the infra deploy time, um, you know, that, you know, I, we need to dig in and look at closer at what you're doing, but, um, I think that there are probably better deployment methodologies you can use that are much faster and get you to a um, get you get you to a especially if you're only doing neutron deployment. Um, the results look, deploying all OpenStack yeah, services look, that's going to be problematic too. Yeah, the results look very high, but if we were to test, say, just the OpenStack deployment time, it would probably be somewhere more like twenty to thirty minutes, and Kubernetes would be a lot lower as well. We were testing both the same amount of or from the same start point as OpenStack for Kubernetes as well but where most of that time is built up is we have to do reboots on the packet nodes for grub updates as well as provision the packet nodes as well as do VPP vSwitch installation and configuration and that that adds about 30 minutes so part of it may be when we're able to actually 
deploy different components and and there's some limitations on that like the VPP networking setup and the vSwitch on OpenStack We're, we set that up at a different time than we do Kubernetes and it's just when you can't do it at, a, at an earlier time the OpenStack there's some infrastructure set up that needs to be created ahead of time so that you have all the information back from the system so that you can use that as input for deploying OpenStack. So, so that would tie in with what Denver's saying. Um, the, the other item to note, Chris, is um, we had some limitations on the OpenStack deployment methods. So part of this right now is we're using Chef OpenStack to do a deploy and we already are aware that there's some other deployments that may use like containers for deploying the services that can be very fast. And that wasn't really an option. It would probably be a good idea to say, here's different ways to deploy. And maybe we even say, here's a chef deployed up in sack and here's another, but, um, but right. Yeah, I mean, I would, I mean, I would, I would go so far as to say is the Chef deployment tooling is probably some of the most poorly maintained deployment tooling that we have in our um, within our community. Um, you know, I know that um, you know the major distribution that is depending upon that um, is is looking at other options. So, um, you know, it's something that you know I might I might bring some of this back to our community and see if we can have someone look at the at the tooling and see if we can offer some feedback on that because I think that um, it, you know just these these comparisons you know it, it to me they almost feel a little bit pathological <laughs> and you know i would want to make sure that you know we are you know doing these measurements in um as fair of a light as possible mm -hmm. um you, you know because because you don't know you know or, you know you know what's being you know if things are being built or you know if you're downloading more packages like it's you know you know, downloading and installing a container image is much faster than, you know, installing a whole wealth of packages across across the system. You know, you're essentially taking out the container build time if you're, you know, considering things like that. Um, you know, so it's so it's so it's hard to tell if it's actually an apples to apples comparison. Absolutely. So um, it sounds like it maybe the first step would be more visibility on the, the stages of what's happening and I, I didn't drop it in here, but I have a, another slide and I, we, we got to update the readme that actually go through the stages and talk more about here's where this kicks off. Terraform runs here and eventually we're using Ansible to, to provision some of the things. Here's where those pieces run and some visibility on that. We'll be pushing that to docs. So probably seeing what we do now first, and then we can talk mm -hmm. about either improvement directly or, other paths. I hear you on the, the chef um, being poorly maintained. Um, I, anyways, I'd, I'd love to hear more, Chris, and if, if you could follow up maybe outside on how we can improve on the OpenStack, I would love to do that. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. And sorry to kind of jump in on it. We just, you know, I mean, we didn't really have a chance to kind of look at the numbers on this until yesterday. So, you know, when, you, when CNCF made the announcement. So, um, Absolutely. I, I understand and I'm, I'm happy to hear the feedback and if you'll ping me on Slack, I can actually invite you to the, um, there's a CNF um, like testing dev type channel where we're focusing on stuff and then we can get you going there and then also, you know, get you going on the GitHub. So we'd love to have improvements on that. We definitely want it to be a fair comparison and talking about options that people have out there. Cool. Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, let's see. So if anyone else would like to join in on this, um, there's a twice monthly meeting that Lucien mentioned earlier, CNF testbed BOF, that's going to be starting on March 4th, first and third Monday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. And we'll be talking about stuff like what we were just saying, use cases that could be implemented and whatever else we want there. Um, feel free to open issues. And then the CNF Slack channel, I don't know if it's been renamed to CNF Testbed or not, probably will at some point. Thanks everyone. Um, I think we have
H H, are you here? Is my audio okay. coming through? Yeah. Awesome. Do you, have, work. do you want to screen share? No, I just wanted to kind of send out an invite. Um, I've been working a lot with the SIG infra, the test infra, and the SIG testing and the Kubernetes test infra. Um, and, and they use a lot of the tooling that drives um, how the, the Kubernetes project works, including the, the bots that um, auto prove and emerge and have all of the, uh, the slash commands and um, also prow and uh, the infrastructure for the displaying things on the test grid. And we've spent out some time um, helping projects that are not part of the funded project for the CNCF for Kubernetes on um, on the Google infrastructure, um, particularly uh, taking use of, of packet. Um, one of the things that we needed to do for um, uh, kind, if you've seen that, it's Kubernetes in Docker. Um, it's a really interesting project um, that you ha have a, download a single binary and say kind build the, uh, the Kubernetes um, from source and then kind deploy and it sets up the containers. Um, they're wanting to have some of their CI infra run on ARM. So uh, thanks to Ed and crew at Packet, we now have a few ARM boxes available. And getting people to the state where they're successfully integrating um, the various uh, features of CI into their projects is something that uh, that obviously our business group is is passionate about. And um, since we've kind of developed some expertise, and I'd like to offer in pairing with folks um, so that we're we're not necessarily writing all the info for them, but we're pairing with them and documenting what we do together so that others can gain more momentum in getting their CI. Uh, for their various projects uh, integrated. Um, I would love to actually uh, spend some time getting to know the, the, the onboarding, help with the onboarding for cncf.ci, um, as well as the, the, um, the CNF. Um, we'll take a, take a look at that. Um, that's, kind of, that's kind of just the, the invite there, if anybody's interested. Um, otherwise, I'll just be reaching out to people I think might be. Is there a project page or anything for getting going on this? Um, not yet. This is um, something that we've just had people asking for help with, uh, various teams. Um, we also, in watching all of the community discussions there, saying how do we get started using um, the infrastructure from the CNCF for our CI, and how do we um, use Packet with our CI? And so we're just seeing this need in the community and needing, and I think as a, as a CI working group, we kind of need to respond with that, uh, to that need. And so I'm just kind of offering to pair and, and start um, responding to that request from our community and see if anybody else is interested in, in doing that with me. Um. I know that um, I've I've heard sending stuff to a cncf.io. There's a maybe it's a help desk mailing list. Was I've seen it as like an initial start for people requesting to work on things. You, you could look at that. Otherwise, if there's like some mailing list or somewhere for people to reach out, I don't know if. Um, you want issues open on say API Snoop for that, but somewhere where people could get started? Um, this is kind of separate from API Snoop. It definitely, I think, falls within the CNCF CI working group. Um, okay. And, and I, I see that the help desk is one of those places where we can see the, the request, but we really don't have um, a response from, from our working group. I don't think we're, we're focusing, I would like to see a more intentional effort and I'm trying to kind of help in that regard to provide some of the, the, the pairing and some of the, the mentoring um, and creating documentation. Are you suggesting that we uh, coordinate with the help desk to see the request coming in? I'm, I'm unclear. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying, I don't know. And I, it sounds like um, I'm just dropping this slide in. It sounds like um, the mailing list in general sounds oh, yep. good and then 
um, the help desk I was thinking might be a helpful thing because Chris, um, Chris Aid, Dan, and other folks are already telling projects if you're interested or have a need for help and there's not a specific place. Mm -hmm. uh, then going there is, is good. Anyways, that's my thoughts, but I don't know if anyone okay. else has. Is, is this like a, would you say this is like II trying to help? Um, well, it's, it's a, uh, in the rebranding, I wasn't really a, a part of that portion. It's news to me as of today. And I was, my initial intentions in registering cncf.ci were to provide um, this type of stuff for all of the CNCF projects. And so I'm trying to find a way where that fits within the CI working group since the. It, it, yeah. I got you I'm trying to navigate that and saying, this is something that the CNCF and our, and our working group should be providing. Um, is that a sub thing of the CNCF.CI? Cause as I've been working on stuff, I set things up as sub project.cncf.ci. Right. As in, as, as, a, as this is part of the CI CNCF CI focus on the community. Um, but with the, with, I'm trying to figure out first with the pairing, how do, how do I help, how do we get people working together and, and creating documentation of this? And also where does it sit within the community? And it may be a longer discussion. I just wanted to get the ball rolling. And we can follow up further on the main list and maybe in, in Sure. Person. So um, I would say part of what, and, and these conversations for everyone here um, have been kind of all over the place, different groups and everything else. So um, the CI working group itself, I would say think of that as a separate thing from that, from the dashboard that Lucina was shown earlier. Um, it happens to have that domain. And I know the naming looks as if that means then it's part of the working group. The dashboard has been specifically, it's not just rebranding of that. So don't, it's not rebranding the working group. It's rebranding that dashboard and the focus of what that's trying to show, which is definitely different from what you're talking about. What you're talking about though, like pairing and working would be an additional project under the working group. So from the idea of the CI working group, that sounds great. I don't know where the conversation should be on that. The first place I could just think is right now, this public mailing list was tied into the work group. Um, the, maybe the, the, um, the GitHub for that. As far as where the working group is going, I'm not sure because the TOC has just kind of redone things. If you'll go look at some of the recent, um, there's been the TOC meetings that have been out. The, there's been a lot of mailing list stuff. There's um, several documents that the TOC has had on what are working groups going to be, where are those going? And the CI working group has been labeled. It's not a working group. It's something to the side of that right now. It may become a working group. And if it does, then I think what you're talking about fits in under it, but um, it's, it's kind of hard to say, but it, it's, different from the dashboard right now. Okay. Here's that service desk link. There's actually a, there's a GitHub on that. Um, emails and other stuff for anybody that's interested in CI responsibilities then talking there and and trying to um, see what's available I think offering those extra services is a good thing for the community and probably reaching out and trying to work with them would be a good place thanks David yeah and it, is there any channel or a place in Slack just for conversations that you want me to point people by just dropping it here? Um, I think the CI, if the CI working group is actually on the, the CNCF Slack. Um, 
that's probably the place for it for now. It, um, or the mailing list. Okay. Well, I'll just, I, I'm not quite sure what the CI working group channel is. So I'll just drop that and put that here for now. Okay. The mailing list. Thanks, Chris. No problem. Cool. And it's just about two o'clock. Uh, Taylor, if you could go to slide 49, how to connect with the CI working group. Our next call will be on Tuesday, March 26. Please subscribe to the CI mailing list and join the CNCF CI channel in Slack. Uh, you can also find us on GitHub, Twitter, and feel free to send us any emails. And thanks so much for joining the CNCF CI working group. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, everybody.